Welcome back to the greenhouse, everyone. We're out here today taking some data from our stovetop sand and thermal mass heater. It's sitting about 90 degrees constantly coming out. This fire's been going for approximately 40 to 45 minutes, and it's really ramped up heat now. So we're actually putting some decent heat into our thermal mass tank. And we're going to be experimenting with pine rosin. One way that we can use it, there's many, many uses for it, but this is just one way we're going to share today. We may share another video with a lot of uses for the pine sap or pine rosin, but, but that's for another day. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. We've got a ton of arrowheads that we can put onto arrows or spears or whatever we want to make with them. So that's just another reason to subscribe to see some cool stuff. Let's get into today's video. We're going to take some temperatures and talk about this system as a whole and what I want to do with it going forward. First things first, the sand heater has been absolutely perfect. This thing is awesome and I'm definitely going to upscale it. I like what it does. I like how it performs and it's quite simple to build and it just sits. I mean, I don't have to move it at all. This thing has sat for a week or two now. We've got enough room to use our stove. We've got tea brewing on top of our stove on the vent stack of it and the fan behind it, the Peltier fan running off of the other vent stack coming out of that oven. We do not have anything cooking right now. We usually do, we've already eaten out here. We wanted to come out and put some heat to this tank over an hour or two just to see what the data looks like and to talk about how much we're transferring and flow rates and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the flow rate, it's not much there. And we're holding just about 100 degrees on that thing, about 99. So for a flow rate of slightly under a gallon a minute, I believe, I have put a couple dots on here to mark. So on the back side, we've got a dot that I turn it to when we've got decent sunlight, because the sun is breaking through the clouds. So we can transfer the gallon per minute to the tank. So with a transfer rate of about a gallon a minute, we're looking at about 55 minutes to transfer 55 gallons. Now, like I said, this is like 45 minutes after we started the fire up here. So the sand itself was sitting maybe like 49, 50 degrees up on here because we do have an open pipe coming from outside. So that open stove pipe does get quite cold and we have not had any freeze ups because our pipes are buried in sand where any water could settle in. That's another reason I absolutely love this sand heater because we tried wrapping all of our copper around our exit pipe and we did not have success with that last winter or the winter before. We had a pipe break on us and that can be very costly when we're not recycling copper pipe and we're buying new. So putting that copper pipe on the exit pipe so close to the wall where cold air is going to blow in and when we get those negative temperatures, I just really like the sand heater. I would like to expand upon that for our next greenhouse, just a large sand tank full of copper tube to be able to light a fire under basically. Pretty much design a large boiler system. So with a little bit of refining, I was able to get our temperature to basically level out like 98, 99 degrees and that is constant. So we're just continually putting this in for the last 20 minutes or so. After about half an hour, the sand really heats up and loses that negative draw from being cold and being next to the exit pipe. This motor speed controller is really shining here in this circumstance because I'm able to really fine tune and control the rate of flow on this system and pull a little less draw than I normally would. We've got the fan blowing behind the bricks there. We've got our compost heater fan blowing back there too. So everything's operating as it should all together. So while we've been out here, we kind of hacked up ourselves a spear here. We've got a nice V cut there and it's a nice long spear. And we've got ourselves a homemade arrowhead there. Not super strong, but if you needed it in a survival situation, I wanna see how this fits in here. I can't get it. Nice. Okay. That is pretty cool looking. So 
We've got a little bit of twine and we've got ourselves some pine rosin. Set this by his other weapons here. So you got the twine. We've got this pine rosin or pine sap that is just all over some of our pine trees. This is just their method of healing themselves. So when it just builds up and builds up, we come by with a knife or something sharp and just pop it right off there. And we've got ourselves a whole bunch of free resources that have many, many uses here. Now I've got this pine resin, rosin over here. It's quite warm. So all of the liquid rosin is going to be our binder for our spear over there. I don't need the blade, I need this. Very nice. So we've got our spear tip fastened on here and we're going to go ahead and bind this twine here with our pine rosin. About two minutes and it's pretty well dry, a little tacky, but it's not sticking. So let's get the other side here. So we've got ourselves a DIY adhesive on our DIY spear binding all of that twine and this stuff is like rock hard too i can hear like the surface and like little it's almost like fiberglass how it breaks and dries or like a, a hot glue gun would feel as it's tacky and pulling away and stuff but once this solidifies it's a very good binder here could even mix wood ash into our mix here with our rosin to fill in any small particulate gaps and make an even harder binder. That is what the Indians used to do. So there will be more videos coming on stuff like this. I really like the primitive skills method of things just to be able to do it just for the simple know-how. Very cool. So here we are at about the hour point, one hour after starting fire, sitting about 109, 110 with a steady rate of flow constantly. So really only had the heat transfer for maybe a half an hour, 25 minutes, half an hour of actual heat coming through. So if we had this going for three hours, we would be able to raise the tank quite a bit. And I may come and do that. We might come back out today or another day where we have a decent amount of sunlight and take some more data from this thing. I really enjoy observing and working these systems and I've got decent steam just rolling steady out uh, wolf spider sitting down there it's hard to see or focus on but there's a baby so we've got good pest protection in the greenhouse quite cool to see all of that we've got our own ecosystem inside here all of our pine rosin turned to like shards now look it's like glass that's super cool stuff. There are so many uses. We're going to bring a video just on the pine rosin itself. And like I said, we need to come out and film a long version video where we take temps from beginning, middle, and then basically at the end of the night where we run it for a couple hours before a cold night. So this pipe physically feels hot. <laughs> the sand holds a ton of thermal mass in there. Like once you heat it up, it holds a lot of energy. It doesn't change form like water does and goes to steam. So we can hold more energy in it. It just doesn't hold it as long as water would. So using the sand to water thermal mass is using like the two best thermal mass sources you possibly could. So we're gonna keep experimenting out here. And if anybody has any questions, this was kind of an off the cuff video here. We're out here just messing around and we're going to be experimenting with more pine rosin stuff, more heating experiments, lots of cool stuff. So we will see you guys in the next video.